Hello, Merlin. Merlin. Hello, yes, Chris. Yeah. Oh, sorry, there was some technical difficulties there. Um, it's me, Christopher. Um, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. It's good to be with you, Chris. Um, in case you guys never heard of him, Merlin Miller was a former presidential candidate. Am I, is that right? Uh, yes. Yes, for the party called the American Third Position. Uh, yeah, and you also done a few films like A Place to Grow starring Gary Morris and... I'm not sure. Was it you with the one in Amish Mafia or that's another Merlin Miller? No, that was a different uh, different one. But uh, Jericho was actually the better known film that I did. Oh, wow. So, um, so exactly... We'll talk about some of the films you made, or, or if you, or you just focus more on the on the campaign, but didn't do so much films. Cause you're more of a politician, but you're you're not so much of an actor, though. Am I wrong? Uh, no, actually, I grew up in Iowa, and Walt Disney had been my idol. So uh, I always had a love for motion pictures, and most of my career spent uh, going to USC and then uh, trying to produce motion pictures. Uh, you know, the kind of films that, that Walt I think would have been making, and. Uh, uh, it's just very difficult in the Hollywood environment to make those kind of films today. So eventually I migrated into politics, um, you know, as a result of what I learned in the, the controlled media and uh, in the political arena and also in the military. Well, it's very difficult because it's competitive or because there's too much like regulation or something? Well, it's just a very controlled environment. It's very oh. New York and, and L.A. centric. Uh, it's, it's not a mid-America environment. And... Uh, in my opinion, most of the films are uh, are basically not of good quality, uh, not of good moral fiber for our young people. And uh, I would just like to see some alternatives so we had better quality entertainment. Well, and even though there's not going to be a third party for some time because people keep thinking, oh, Democrat or Republican, even though they're both owned by the same people. So, like, you were the 2012 presidential nominee. I thought it was 2008. I might have mistaken that. I apologize. No, actually, I su- yeah, I, I supported Ron Paul in the 2008 campaign, and uh, of course, uh, he was marginalized out of the Republican Party. But I was recruited in t- 2012, and and you're right, you know, there's total domination by the Republicans and Democrats. But I do think that's about to change. I think so many Americans Hopefully. are waking up. It's libertarians. And how exactly was Ron Paul out? Because supposedly something about soap or CISPA, and something about censoring Ron Paul and then like he was he was like out and there's some videos that have been taken from YouTube removed like a few times to talk about Ron Paul and the awesomeness of Ron Paul so what what you, in your perspective do you believe that was the reason or reasons that Ron Paul was out because you know they can't he can't be JFK because that'll be revolution but all he could do is just kill his reputation so what how come Ron Paul is out though well, I think, you know, uh, our media is so controlled by the military-industrial complex as oh. a part of it, but international banking, we, we've got money to interest that don't like the message that people like Ron Paul carry, which is stop oh, the wars, course. get a sound currency, let's restore our freedoms. Those messages are not what the power players want to hear. Of course, we want more war, that's what they want to hear instead. Um, by the way, um... Talk about your campaign, how that went. You you would try to run for president, but how'd that go? Like, what's your experience? Well, it, was, it, was, it was an interesting experience. I was very reluctant to do it because, you know, I didn't come from a political background. I didn't really have political ambitions. And, uh, and this party had some, some interesting uh, you know, platform positions, but, but ultimately I wasn't very comfortable with, with some of their positions. And, uh, and I eventually left them after the campaign in 2012. And that led us to forming a new party, which we're doing right now called the American Eagle Party. You never try to run for 2016? Some people say Jesse Ventura could run for 2016, or Rand Paul, which I, I, I am a huge fan of them. Why don't you go well, for 2016? I, well, we'll see what happens. You know, I, I just don't want to position because there's so much that could happen in the next year. And, and our focus right now is to build a grassroots movement so that we can organize and have party chapters in as many states as possible uh, just so that we can't have some impact on the election in 2016. Well, you're saying so much could happen. Are you talking about, like, false flags, big stuff like the FCC and the J. Helm 15, which is a martial law practice uh, that they want to do in Texas over the summer, stuff like that that might distract us? You yeah, know, there, there's so many possible. Yeah, there's so many yeah and the 20, right 20 classified pages that won't come out, 
the trans uh, trans Pacific partnerships that even Congress can't see it. Uh, the Federal Reserve auditing, I don't know how what's the status of that. Some people say we're very close. I'm like, we talk about it, but then we don't talk about it anymore. We have to be consistent in this stuff. I don't know what what uh, did they forget about it? I don't get it. What do you think well, is going you know, on? I, you know, I think uh, of course Rand Paul will probably be running as Republican, and, and whether he gets a nomination is is doubtful. But people like Jesse Ventura. Uh, you know, they're voices that are independent voices, and, and they need to be heard, but it's tough unless you have a viable third party that can really go up and challenge the Democrats and Republicans to, to get a candidate who speaks truth to have any chance. Hmm. So how does it work when it comes to the process of um, being for president? Well, you know, the, the dominance of the major parties is such that it's very difficult for an independent or a third party to even get on the ballot in a lot of states. Uh, it, it just it's, it's lopsided. You know, you, you can't get into the debates. Uh, you have to have so many petition signatures to hope to get on the ballot. That's a costly process. So it's, it's just very difficult to compete against the, the moneyed power of the two parties that are totally controlled by special moneyed interests. And even the White House um, secretary or White House media staff, they had to, like, be completely like stupid in a way you know they cannot acknowledge that there was drones etc you have to like really go along with them a hundred percent otherwise you cannot have a job there i assume that's true well yeah i think so uh, you know it's, it's a an environment of puppets uh basically you know the vast majority of politicians are not representing their constituency yeah in and any congress way. is just ceremonial the president is just a post turtle puppet so yeah i get it so, so exactly, what's the process between you and going? To, uh, you say you 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 weren't a, you don't have a political background. You were you were more probably into movies than politics, but you decided to get into politics. How did you start to get to president? What was the process to gain, like what qualifications, etc.? Well, you know, I, I think that you know I certainly don't have qualifications in terms of what is traditionally expected. You know, to get a law degree and and, and serve in Congress and do those sort of things. But I've got a lot of real world experiences and. And I think the problem with our political system today is we don't have the common man representing us anymore. Uh, it, it's all people that, that work for an elitist uh, a system. And we, we need grassroots people to run for office again and have a chance to represent us. Oh. So something about the FEC, the Federal Election Commission, and you had to have like a certain amount of money, thousands of dollars, to actually be... Um, uh, like just some of the requirements to, to even get into the ballot, etc. Well, each state has different rules, and that's part of the problem. Uh, you know, one state may require, uh, you know, 100,000 signatures on petition. Another state may just say, pay us some money. Uh, every state is different. So you, as an independent party, you have to sort of pick and choose and strategize which state should we go for to try to get on the ballot, and would that have an impact on the general election? And that's only for the national elections. Uh, of course, I think the independent parties have a much better chance of trying to get somebody elected to the Congress or even to the Senate. Uh, but it's still tough. You know, we, we've got to start local and, and build our chapters, you know, for the people again. And, and I think the people are ready for that. They're, they're tired of a feeling that they're not represented anymore. Wow. So, and besides the presidency run, how did that go? Do you think you, you tried your best, et cetera, and just that... People just didn't buy it. Did you? Where is it a landslide? Did you get your well, butt you know, whooped? We, we, uh -huh. we were a totally unknown quantity. Had no money, really. Had no money for uh -huh. advertising. The mainstream media totally ignores anybody. Uh, even major candidates like Ron Paul, as you indicated earlier, they'll try to ignore. So it's it's really next to impossible for somebody without a lot of money or a major party behind them to of have course. a chance. And, and we, we had no viable chance, and we knew that going in, but our whole purpose was to try to get some messages out there, to try to stir the pot and say, why aren't the Republicans and the Democrats stopping these wars? Why aren't they stopping the immigration? Because it's an agenda, yeah. sir. It's an agenda. Yeah, why aren't they restoring the economy? You know, there's so Th that's, many things It's done. an agenda, really. Like, we don't have our sovereignty. It's it's an agenda. What has to be done is going to be done, no matter no matter what. That That's the problem. We don't have sovereignty. The president's a puppet ever since JFK died. There's a bunch of people, even high level, that could probably agree with you there. Ever since JFK, it all went down. 
I agree. I think that was a turning point in our history, and that's that's when the power elite took over, and it was really a coup against the American people. Mm. And as far as owning the Federal Reserve, that that was actually a law JFK signed. It's just that it's not in force. Is that right? Well, my understanding Sorry. was that, of course, he was, he was trying to create a a uh, treasury uh, issued currency, you know, and, and and basically ultimately get away from the Federal Reserve, which is nothing but a group of private bankers who are of issuing our currency. And this thing, it's called the Public Law 8836. The House of Representatives took up the President's request early in 1963 and passed H.R. 5389 on April 10, 8, 1963, by a vote of 251 to 122. The Senate passed the bill on May 23rd with a vote of 68 to 10. Can they sign the bill into law and then sign an executive order authorizing the Treasury Secretary to continue printing silver certificates during the transition period? The act, which became public law, 8836, 7 7 54 repeal the Silver Purchase Act, 1934, and related laws, repeal the tax of tra- silver transfers, and authorize the Federal Reserve to issue one or two dollar bills in addition to the ultra very issuing. And with. Yeah, that's a, that's a good recap. I wasn't aware of much of that. But they didn't like that. And that's why they blew his head off. Yeah, he, he definitely had some, some enemies, uh, you know, not only the financial elites, but he had a lot of other enemies. And uh, it, it definitely, in my opinion, was a conspiracy that uh, certainly destroyed uh, our republic in a sense of representation for the people. Yeah, and definitely, you, you know what is also the thing there? Because as far as Kennedy, he was like the last real president and... And something about like his brain, his brother took the Robert Kennedy might have taken his brain that way they they can't reproduce him or something like that. They took away the brain and God knows where that could be. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know any of that. I, I just know that, you know, it was a sad day for history. Yeah. You know, well, hopefully we got, hopefully Rand Paul makes it and, you know, if we elected Jeb Bush or Hillary Clinton, then we deserve everything we get. Just know that. Um, besides your presidency run, you also went to visit Iran. Yes. To talk, and, uh, talk about that, actually, because I've never been to Iran. I wish I could go one day. Well, I, I think so much of the problems we have today are these wars, and uh, I think what's behind these wars, you know, besides international banking interests, is the Zionist movement and the, the desire to control, you know, the geopolitical situation in the Middle East. And unfortunately, we are totally behind, uh, uh, or have been at least, behind Israel. And I think that's been very damaging to America's foreign policy. And it's involved us in all these wars, which which shouldn't be. I'm I'm very much for securing truce. And I don't believe, uh, and I I didn't believe in the demonization that was going on against uh, uh, some of these countries in the Middle East, and particularly the Iranians. And uh, when you get over and really start researching the facts, uh, you realize that we are not being fed the truth here in America. That the Iranians, of course not. Fact, yeah, they, they do not have nuclear weapons, and uh, uh, they're a sovereign nation that just is prideful and and wants to pursue their own sovereign course. And uh, as Thomas Jefferson said, we should reach out for peace, uh, commerce, and honest friendship to all nations, and entangling alliances with none. But unfortunately, that entangling alliance that we've had with Israel has just been very damaging to America. Of course, and they think you're anti-Semitic, even though I've had Rabbi Weiss, and he hates Zionism. He's Jewish through and through, you know? And I think, you know, I think more and more American uh, Jews are turning against Zionism, but it's a... It's, it's a way a, to keep people, road. keep their mouth shut, that's why, that's that's the thing. You can't say Zionist. Alice can't say the word Zionist that much. George Norrie, I went read one meme with um George Norrie. If I, I can't talk about Zionists, otherwise they won't let me back on Coast to Coast AM. That was a meme, you know. So, in a way, it's influenced American policy. You know, so much so, and you can see that with uh, Netanyahu's visit. You know, his addresses to the joint session of Congress. Our media is totally owned, the mainstream media, by Zionist interest, and uh, they will do everything they can to ensure that the politicians that are elected uh, support the state of Israel and their and their plans in the Middle East. And it's just sad that the American people are not being. Represented, our foreign policy is, is totally uh, opposed to the best interests of the American people. And as as far as um royal, you know, as far as royalties we have, you know, the the Bush or Clintons, they're not going anywhere. 
you know, what George Herbert Walker Bush once said, if the American people had ever known the truth about what we Bushes had done to this nation, we would be chased down the streets and lynched. That's no surprise there. But it's just that people don't know. I don't condone that, but I would understand why people are very angry. When somebody's trashing your country, of course you could be angry. Russians experienced that, the Iranians... So, but I think the American people don't believe in dynasties. We don't want the Bushes and the Clintons dominating our politics. We but that's what's going to happen if people don't stand up to it. Who do you think the president of 2016 is? They already decided who's that. It's all smoke-filled. They all have a... They all have a um, I don't know if you've heard of Bill Hicks. You know, they're not uh, Bill Hicks on an election. You know, wh- whatever happens to, to an election, he's in this room with a bunch of people, very powerful people around him. You know, think of it as like a big business business uh business meeting. It would he have a your big um, round table or oval shaped table, and every a bunch of people, including you, are there. So we're gonna decide how we're gonna run the country. We call the shots, etc. And we have the CIA and a bunch of other people as hit teams if nobody likes it. So we don't call the shots. Let's put it that way. Now I look at it like professional wrestling, where their best buddies in the locker room, but they go out on, on, in the arena and put on a performance for the crowd. But both of them are owned by the same people. And it's the same thing with major politics. It's just a game. They'll play one party agenda for a while, then they'll play the other party agenda for a while. And the American people are none the wiser. Oh, that sucks. But did you ever thought of like running for president in the future, or are you just going to... Well, we're going to see what happens here this year. We want to get our chapters going. We want to see what kind of response we'll get from from grassroots Americans. And, you know, we're very small and unknown right now, but that, that could change in the next year, uh, especially if uh, our economy goes down, if we have more wars, more things that might wake the American people up. Oh, yeah, and what's going to wake the American people up? You know, as it, I think of five things. One, race for rights, forced inoculations, lack of privacy, lack of freedom of speech, Lack of, let's see, also t- also taking away the Second Amendment. You can't defend the Second Amendment if you don't have if you don't have the Fourth Amendment, which means, you know, it has to do with um, you have to have a warrant. There's no seizure without a warrant. So if they take away your guns without a warrant, and you let that, and you tolerate that. You're gonna how are you gonna defend yourself if they took your guns away? So that was one from Rand Paul, I think. That quote. Yeah, no, we need to, to fully back the Bill of Rights and our Constitution, and we're losing all those things through, through the Patriot Act and the uh, National Defense Authorization Act, and those things need to be, uh, you know, uprooted right away. I mean, I can't imagine the American people have allowed this. Well, so um, back to, to uh, your journey to Iran. How is Iran like? Um, well, you know, the Iranian people. They're, they're awesome Iran, people. Yeah. Yeah, they're very warm-hearted people. Uh, you know, they, they're human beings. They're, they're, they were very nice, very wonderful hosts to me. And I saw a side of, of their country, which was beautiful. And uh, uh, certainly not the country that, we're, that is painted in our mainstream media. Uh, yes. So we need to reach out with, with peace to these people. We should be trading with them. We should be... Uh, is there an embargo of the U.S. to, to Iran? Because like, Iran and the U.S. Like, want nothing to do with each other. Is that like an embargo? Well, they've had these sanctions against Iran, making it very difficult for the Iranian people's economy. You know, basically, when the international bankers... Uh, oh, of course, because uh, Iran doesn't let people F with their banks. That's the thing. Because yeah. uh, Iran was executed four Rothschild bankers, which are the ones that are in control here. They execute the bankers, so, yeah, um, they don't want anybody messing with their banks. And if you look up the, the picture of the, the National Bank, the... Cool little, uh, cool, um, huge, um, like a glass building, which is like huge shaped. And I can understand why no, they don't want anybody messing with their banks because they want to loot the country. That's why we're, we, we're going to invade Iran. We got 45 bases surrounding Iran. The U.S. armed bases, including with some help from Britain. And we're going to invade them when the time is right. It's just a matter of when. I think that's certainly the game plan for the, for the Zionists, but I think the tide is turning on them. I think more and more people are waking up to the fact that that's not in our best interest, and, and these negotiations will be a good uh, telltale sign. If, if they do secure a, you know, a nuclear agreement with, with Iran, then that may diffuse a lot of this, and I'm, I'm hopeful that that happens. 
And so, and besides you going to Iran, you also were lucky. And some of on the on our campus actually looked like Mahmoud Amani had, and unfortunately, I didn't talk to him because like he looked exactly like him, like his twin. Like, oh my god! Like I should I should talk to him because I could imagine if imagine if he's there with no security guards. I'm like, what the heck are you doing? They're gonna freaking kill you. So that couldn't be the real one. But you also met like for around maybe 20 minutes or so. How how was your talk with him? Well, he was a very genuine man. He was humble. He was very polite. Uh, uh, he, he certainly wasn't the demon that we are convinced that he's supposed to be. Uh, I think he's just a very dedicated nationalist. He believes in protecting the Iranian interests and very humble. And I understand he did go back into teaching and. Uh, he lives very humbly, or he did live very humbly. He's certainly not a pretentious person, not at all like our politicians. Yeah, and all they do is want to defend their sovereignty. That's why they're free from the new law in a way. But the only way you could probably not be free is if there's like sleeper cells or if the any people could be bought off and then any hit teams from the agencies would actually go and hunt you down because people are bought off. So let's just say they want, if you're hiding in Iran and any anybody any from anybody from the uh, any feds could could probably buy off any Iranian security officer and then they'll go and kill you. So sleeper cells and that you would have to watch out. But many I've been told I've told many times those there's nowhere you could hide actually. Well, we don't always understand the internal politics of these other nations, and, and we shouldn't always try. You know, it's their country. We should let them. Let them be. I respect their sovereignty and, and just try to engage in, in good dialogue and trade with them. Mm, so, do you, have you gone back to Iran? Uh, I went back there for several trips over a period of a couple of years, and uh, I don't know that I'll be going back anytime in the near future, but uh, uh, it's a wonderful country, wonderful people, and, and we need to normalize relations so Americans can go visit Iran. There's, there's no reason we shouldn't be. So um, it's pretty tricky, at least for, for U.S. citizens to go to Iran. How, how do you go to Iran? So uh, I read somewhere that you had to go to the Pakistan embassy in Iranian relations, which because there's no U.S. embassy in Iran. There's no Iranian embassy here, obviously. But there's Pakistan. Right. So you had to go in there and get like a visa or something. That, that's right. They, they, uh, they work with the Pakistanis. There's only an Iranian interest section. They don't have their embassy. So... Uh, uh, so it's a very difficult process. It's not easy to, oh, to get a visa. Why is it so hard? Well, you know, it's a, it's a question of they don't have an embassy here, so you are working through the Pakistani uh, embassy. And, and then the fact that their foreign ministry, uh, uh, they have to approve the visas just as we would approve visas for an Iranian wanting to come into our country. And uh, that, that process is a very uncertain process, especially with these sanctions going on. And, uh, you know, all of the... That's retarded. These sanctions. And why? Because they just wanted to savagely fight for their sovereignty. That's why they have these... Uh, and they want to have these sanctions. That's all. Because, you know... And they have to do everything they're told. Otherwise, you know, these people, you might not hear from them. Or they're going to have to get out of here. Or they'll just be... Um, they, they, their, their careers could be compromised. Like, let's say... Because this happens behind the scenes. Besides um, doing cocaine, Clinton did a lot of cocaine back in the day. Um, they do all kinds of stuff like pedophilia. Like even in British government, it's a cover up there. For national security, they cannot say because the world will be in, like the world will probably hate the, obviously they would definitely hate it when they find out that the British government is involved with pedophilia. But, uh, but the American government is also involved with pedophilia. Have you ever heard of um, Gary Caradori? Um, he was a guy... Supposedly the the FBI killed him, but a bomb in a plane. Gary Cardori exposed that the uh, that this is in the Washington Times homosexual prostitution inquiry snares VIPs Reagan Bush cowboys quote took midnight tour of White House. So they were they were um they were involved with pedophilia with little boys little girls and nobody's in trouble. This is involving the Bushes. Washington Times this is in 1989 June 29. And then eventually they killed him and his son. So check your plane, check your plane, check your car, you know, and, and uh, you know, make sure the car is not bugged, like like Michael Hastings, 
or man, and check any even your drinks like um Barnaby Jack, which they supposedly high on cocaine. BS, they killed him. So check your drink, check your car, check your plane, check everything you have. Watch your back, you know. Yeah, no, it's, it's unfortunate it's that way, but I, I do believe you're right. I think most politicians are either blackmailed or they're bribed. That that that's home. that's Congress. Cong that's yeah. Congress. Did you get to meet any Congress people that can confirm that? I'm sure you had. Well, yeah, I don't know that any would confirm that, you know, but but I think there's probably enough circumstantial evidence to paint a pretty strong picture that that's the case. And and as far as so, what what would one have to do to be able to go to Iran? Obviously, I can only talk to a few people about this because many people are like, some guy told me, oh, um, Iran's this and that. I'm like. They're probably a complete moron, and he's a and to me he's a cool guy. Normally, like I, I don't I don't hate the guy or anything, but when it comes to talking about politics, he's like very conventional, and and he would probably say anything bad about Iran, etc. You know, but 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 like people are that open, that narrow minded, that simple minded, that kind of dissonance. So no matter what. Yeah, even if you go to a country and it's a it's a great country around, and they'll never know for sure because this they have this moronic way of thinking that that the media tries to sabotage the culture, etc. Well, there's that meeting in in the nineties where it changed the music industry and the hip hop and rap, or was the CIA engineering MTV? This is all declassified. So, like, how would you be able to go to Iran if you're a U.S. citizen? Yeah, that's a very good point because I, I think that. The big difference between the hardliners and the moderates is their attitude toward the Western culture and the negative influences of our uh, of our media and, and how it would affect uh, those people that, uh, that practice the Islamic faith and, and particularly their women. Uh, they they want to safeguard their culture and their religion, and I think they see uh, uh, the Western culture as, as being something that uh, would, would certainly be very damaging to them. So they're very cautious you know of... Even though a bunch of people over there are actually adapting to Western, you know, they're, they're probably, whether it's fashion or, or you know, or, or or way of life, they're they're trying to get trendy like the West is. You know, they, you probably see, if you look at, like, um, Iranian teenagers, they're kind of look like the the ones from the West, actually. it's This is cultural-wise. You, you know, whether it's, um, well, unfortunately, this was Happy Dances Arrested and... They couldn't sing the song "Happy," but if you look at them, they're just regular people, you know. But and they adapt a bunch of stuff from the West, whether it's clothing or even how to have fun. You know, they're just like the West in a way. They all I hang think, out, etc. Yeah, I think young people have always been attracted to that, the, the Western side of the freedoms of Western culture. But at the other side of that, I can understand their concern. Because you look at what's happened to Christianity in America over the last hundred years, uh, you know we've been subverted uh, to such a degree that we don't have the moral character that we had a hundred years ago, and and I think largely a lot of that is due to the the media influence. Oh yeah, um, there is one, actually two pictures you should look up, which I'm I'm trying to, I'm trying to find that I couldn't. It's been a while since I actually saw it, but there's one America is missing. Ah, I found one. The America we used to know. The America was a model of justice in the world, not tyranny. It's a picture, and it re that really got to me. America championed the human rights, not violated them. The America that opposed torture, not the one that practices it. The America that didn't engage in preemptive warfare. The ca America that didn't spy on its own citizens. The America that respected the Geneva Conventions. The America that respected its own constitution. The America whose leaders didn't prey on fear. It's been five years since September 11, which is an old picture. Has anyone seen that America? We miss you so much. We missed that America. We gotta get her back. I don't care how we get her back, but we gotta get her back. Did that? Did that, did that get to you? That that yeah, quote. Much so. That that quote. I don't know who it was from. MarinCountyDemocrats.org. So. Well yeah. Yeah. Like. Yeah. And there's another one. Political cartoon, where. Um. You see Uncle Sam, you see a Statue of Liberty, you see a, a Supreme Court judge, and they're all behind bars. And they're all right next to each other. I don't know if you've, if you, if you, if you've heard of these. And this one, oh, like, it, 
it was really steep, let's say. You know, unfortunately, I can't quite uh, find it because it it was like it was like the five. It was like the five kinds of people that were, that would normally represent the America, you know, patriotic, Uncle Sam, the Supreme Court judge, the Statue of Liberty, and you see them all in jail in a political cartoon. So that that is deep. I swear. So. Um, so as you were saying before, what what would one have to do bef- bef- like if you want to go to Iran in the future? You were saying? It, 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 until things normalize, about the only way is you have to get some sort of sponsorship. And I was lucky that I was involved as a filmmaker wanting to tell a story that was of interest to the, uh, the film commission people over there for the film festival. So I was invited through their film festival. But you have to almost have somebody over there sponsor you to want to get you there because the foreign office would have to approve your visa. And that takes like a long time. I assume that it takes us so maybe like more than a month. It can. It just depends upon you know who's who's pulling the strings and how hard they're pulling. But I think if things can normalize, that would all change. I think we would have to. Uh, it would be much easier to go over there if uh, we can get these uh, these agreements resolved. And so I guess you paid so much money to go to Iran, right? Well, you don't have to. I mean, if you're sponsored, they can pay the uh, the expenses. It just depends yeah. on what your arrangement is with them. And you obviously had to go to Pakistan embassy, I would assume. Yeah, that's that's. Or, right. or you would probably have to travel to, some, to another country, and then like some people say, like if you go to Canada, you can go everywhere. So. Or you have to go to, like, Turkey, and then from Turkey you go to Iran. Just like here, you can't go to Cuba directly unless you're a Cuban-American. So you'd have to probably go to Canada or DR or any other country, and then from there you on, you could go to Cuba. Yeah, yeah, there's no flights that are direct flights from America to uh, Iran. No. <laughs> no, there isn't, unfortunately. And... Well, I encourage people to go out there and, you know, and try to go, because I want to make a documentary, hopefully, maybe, you know, about Iran and, and a bunch of other countries, with them, which the media p- portrays, you know, it's their job. You know, I once read this meme where, you know, Rothschilds own my network, so I have to demonize Russia no matter what. I can't talk about the, you know, all the all the heinous crimes uh, that in Gaza where you see the children are like, it's really graphic. I can't talk about that. I have to demonize Russia. It's my job because the Rothschild Zion is on my network. So yeah, so you have to find out the truth yourself. So um, nice. before you go on to Ron Paul, what do you think you lost? Because the media did not like you were like unknown, underrated. I'm kind of surprised you're still alive because they could kill you if you unless you have profile. They could kill you, and it's like nothing happened. So you gotta be careful there. I think, you know, unless you're a serious threat, they don't take people seriously. There's so many people out there that are that are complaining about the evils going on, but if you don't have the power to do anything about it, you're not really a threat to them. Or, uh, but I think a lot of, a lot or of people if you worked in the system up. for a long time, like Ron Paul did, he could probably do something, but killing him is like, you know, it's like uh, um, going with, it's like sleeping with, the, with some mobster's wife. You're dead. So, and it's going to cause a revolution. They kill Ron Paul. So they just ignore him or demonize him for their own safety. Why do you think I, they I don't, think... I think they don't kill Snowden for the same reason. Cause you know, Russia is not some, not just some country we can mess around like Iraq. This is Russia. We don't want to go to war with Russia. And even though our state department is trying to mess with them in the Ukraine. Oh, uh, and you know, in case people don't know, this is the part that pisses me off too. There are troops. We're fighting Spetsnaz in Ukraine as we speak. But nobody cares, of course. No. Right? Well, I, I've heard that. You know, I don't There's, have confirmation. We're, we're fighting the Spetsnaz now. And they keep threatening that there's going to be nuclear war if, if we don't get out of there. Thanks to your lovely George Soros, we are there in the first place. So, you know, he brags that he started the Ukraine conflict, etc. Ron Paul is right that that Russia is intervening, etc., and we should not intervene there at all. 
we should get out of there. And that's another part I love from Ron Paul. Yeah, that's right. Agree. So, what, what are your views on Ron Paul? Oh, you know, I, I got involved in politics because of Ron Paul. Uh, uh, he said things that made sense to me and was the first politician that didn't seem like a politician, but that seemed like an honest statesman. So I've got greatest respect for Ron Paul. Ah, nice. Um, what about Jesse Ventura? I, I like a lot of what Jesse Ventura says. He's you know, off the I, grid I, not, now. He's in Mexico, by the way. Yeah, I, I'm not sure he's a serious contender for office, but uh, but he could have been. It's just that it's. I think it's too much pressure because you know with the stuff with the Navy SEALs and the story made up because they couldn't prove it, etc. And not to mention, they go, they they go at him just because, oh, they think that he stole like he got a million or uh, or so from the from Kyle's um, widow, even though the jury is actually the warden, and you cannot talk to the jury probably before the. A court or anything that's probably a crime most likely that it is so uh, if it's the jerry why are people just ma angry at him because he was trying to stand up for himself and clear his name which most anybody would do actually if you were in his shoes it's just the oxymoron yeah. and hypocritical yeah, he, be he became a target you know and they, they have to marginalize the ones they want to target and and they can't kill him either because he's really high profile he was a governor almost a navy seal i'm not saying he's a navy seal uh, I think he could have been, but like he was, he needed like a few months of training or something like that. He's not complete, not a full Navy SEAL, but he's familiar with the Navy SEALs. Let's put it that way. And he was a wrestler too. They say like wrestling prepares you for politics. And he's, a, he's an impressive speaker too. I, I saw him in that uh, Valley for the Republic in Minneapolis in uh, 2008. Very impressive. So how exactly does it help you being a wrestler? In politics. Uh, just notoriety. People know who he was. Oh. Wow. So, so um, by the way, what do you think that well, now it's very hard to even talk to him? He went on Alex, the Alex Jones show maybe a month or so ago. And someone told me off air that if you were to get Jesse Ventura, it's very hard. And something, I don't know the term is squirrel numbers. Squirrel, that's in like the number always changes. And even you could even see no caller ID. So, you know, and the NSA is spying on everybody, including they're probably spying on us right now. Yeah, no doubt. This call is monitored. <laughs> yep. Ooh, the ring spy. We're being spied on now, right now. Well, but they're good people in the NSA, so maybe they'll get the message that we want freedom. That's all. Um, what do you think is gonna happen in 2016 and beyond? Well, well, first, first let's talk about 2015, because I can I predict in the next few months to one year tops. There's going to be deep crud that's going to go down. Whether well, it's false flags, etc. Someone told me off air that you should probably get out of the country before they don't let you out of the country over the summer. But I'm a freshman in college. How can I get out of the country? But I think that education, sports, entertainment, and work is going to be interrupted. Well, maybe that will wake people up. What do you think? I think there's a very good chance that something could happen this year, whether it's escalation of war, the economy collapsing. It's uh, it's all stage economy. And civil war, yeah, the J-15, they're preparing for it. Um, what do you think with the missing nukes? Because this was stuff recently they got. They fired like around 30-something officials. Supposedly the nukes were stopped somewhere by, by base security somewhere. I'm not sure if it was in Louisiana or something. That they, they were stopped. They were missing. They didn't know about them, six nukes. So whatever happened to those news? Were they, were they, did they get them? Well, I suspect there's a lot of unknown things that, that are out there that are dangerous to us that we're not aware of. Uh, but if People don't want to talk about it. I try to get someone on that used to work in the field, but he doesn't want to talk about it. I can't tell they're afraid. I think they're afraid. But, you know, you, 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 you have good, um, you have good, um, intentions so but it's just that they don't want to they don't want to guess risk, their, risk more than their career so etc so what 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 do you think there because like most people don't even que don't even question because like what happened to the missing nukes did we get him that get him or not and 
we don't really know. I mean, there uh, hopefully are people in our military and security services that are doing everything they can to turn this around. And, and yeah, their, um, know, get them and destroy them. Because they're supposedly going to go to the Middle East. And then when we want oh, ISIS has nukes. Oh, so that's where the nukes went. We fund ISIS, obviously. So now the nukes are going to... Now they're going to... They have our weapons. They have British weapons. And a bunch of other of our allies' weapons, probably. And so then they're going to attack us. And then they're going to blame... Who are they going to blame? Us. You. People like you. People like me. People like Ron Paul. Jesse Ventura. Everybody. Who's... Who's into the... Who's a patriot. A real patriot. So if you check out this video, um... Cop... Once war over, was it? Once war over constitutionalists. So you see his armored vehicle, and yeah, we want uh, war against constitutionalists, stockpilers. Oh yeah, shock video. Prepare pol police. Prepare for war with gun owners. And this is the video itself. Okay. Still trying to address the threat. Uh, weapons, a lot of, a lot of ammunition, and they have, and they have uh, you know, weapons here locally. Constitution lists a lot of people that have shot. So I'm thinking that is totally appropriate so in Iraq, but where, what kind of a situation in the that, U.S. would you see? Iraq, but why is it here? Why are these vehicles um, deployed here, but we're not in Iraq? That happening. I mean, we've got a lot of Constitution lists a lot of people that back to america and clean house here we, we need to stop messing with everybody else's terrain oh yeah uh, the cops are war against constitutionalists you know uh, or harry reed um these are no more than domestic terrorists fire but man like these people don't get fired like eric holder he still has a job why don't we just fire these people can we fire these people man i'm getting well, sick of these people now. Yeah, Eric Holder, I think, is out now. I'm not sure if he's officially gone, but uh, we're not gonna, we're out. not gonna, we're not gonna fire him. Mm -mm. And she's the one that Clive Bundy's a domestic terrorist. Somebody said it was uh, Newsbusters.org. It was from M MSNBC. But you know, he says they're domestic terrorists. I had Clive and Bundy on, by the by the way. He's an awesome dude. Family man, very constitutionalist. He's a real patriot. Yeah, I don't know. Have you have I, you talked to him? I've not talked to him, but I followed his story. And and was it here the video where? So these people who hold, hold themselves who hold out, themselves out to, be to be patriots are, are nothing not. They're nothing, they're nothing more than, than domestic, domestic terrorists. terrorists. Oh, I'm still here because. Uh... Oh, that's retarded. He's retarded. That statement's retarded. Uh, what are you going to do, man? These are the people we have in office. That's the best we could do, according to George Carlin. You know? We, we need to take our country back, Chris. We got to take our country back, you know. I think, uh, is it safe to say, I think we should, you know, arm ourselves to teeth, arm ourselves until, we could, until there's no tomorrow, arm ourselves until we can arm ourselves no more. I'm very pro-Second Amendment, by the way. I'm not calling for violence, but I am calling for people to defend themselves and be aware. Uh, just hopefully we can turn this around in a peaceful way, and, and that's what our whole political effort is about, mm -hmm. waking people up so we can yeah. take our government back. Yeah, because our, our government is being hijacked by foreign interests and the Federal Reserve. I don't know. What is the status of the 28 pages and the uh, audit the Federal Reserve? I'm going to get somebody on regarding the 20 um, pages. I don't want to reveal his name now, but... Um, He's, he's going to talk about the 20 pages, how they were close to getting, getting them possibly. Or what about auditing the Fed? How are these two things going? Are we close to get, getting I these? Think, yeah, I think it's going to happen simply because I think the Federal Reserve is about to collapse anyway. I think our whole monetary system is on the edge. And uh, they're going to need something. They're going to need some replacement. So I, I think it's inevitable that, uh, that an audit's going to happen or, or the collapse will happen. And they think that it's gonna ruin his career, could make his worst nightmares come true. They're gonna. They think it's this is from Slate. They they think it's gonna it's gonna kill your career. You know, we got Yellen here, and obviously she's a puppet, so she's not gonna. She thinks that oh, it's bad to order the Fed. It's about power. It's not transparency. No, it, we want. We actually want our country back, man. We don't want offshore interests ruling it. 
So nice we got the we gotta get the Rothschilds. We got it's like uh, someone keep telling me um we gotta kick them out of the country. We gotta keep these very men out of the country. You know, and that's what that's what the Iranians did, and that's why they're considered terrorists. You know, Iran doesn't hate foreigners. They hate the government. Our go- they hate the American government. They don't hate the American people. They just hate the government. Right. And, no, you know, there's, there's good people in the government, though. The ones who are no, listening right now. No. There's good people in the government. You know. Um, by the way, uh, so now let, let's get to 2016 and beyond. Because uh, there was one video from Jesse Ventura where who's the next president in 2016? He reveals it. It's a Bush or a Clinton. Now, if we can't peacefully, legally, and lawfully get these people out of the country, get them arrested, indicted, and they're war criminals, eh, we're in big trouble. Because people believe that war criminals can only be Nazis, even though these people help fund the Nazis, actually, and... People are not going to really do anything. They don't care that the country is being trashed, raped, and subjugated and all, whatever, all whole nine yards. So what do you think is going to happen in the 2016? It all, depends on what hap- it all depends what happens with the economy and the wars this year. If the American people wake up, I don't think the Bushes and Clintons will get elected. I think there'll be a, a backlash. A there'll, be, backlash. there'll be protests across the country, I think. Is, is, you can look this up. This, there could be protests. There would be protests all across the country. Yeah, the, I, I if, if you think Ferguson was bad, imagine they tried to start a civil war. There's going to be mass protests. I don't condone any violent activity, but I'm just saying that, that there's going to be mass protests. That's just people's reaction. People are not going to just stand there and take it, but get under the rock or get inside their holes. They're going to come out, you know, with the red pill, obviously the expression, and face the facts. They're gonna, they're gonna protest, etc. They're not gonna yeah, hide in some bunker. Yeah, and some people are actually training, as we speak, you know, in you know, a, as a militia. Hopefully, it doesn't come to that. But the only way it's not going to come to that is if we can find peaceful ways to turn this around. And to me, that means waking the people up and uniting. We the wake people. the people up, and the and the government they they know what's going on. They know probably more than you or me, or they could even tell what Alex is saying for like over twenty years. You know, they know what's going on like behind the scenes. It's just that the it's just the majority are being overrun. They're being controlled. There's a bunch of people high level that know what's going on. I can confirm everything I'm saying. They know what's going on. It's just that what do you want to do? They they just see like they're just like I wish the American people wake up. They can't do anything by themselves, obviously, because they'd be targets, and the heart attack gun will be waiting for them. But they, if everybody wakes up, you're right. Um, you can't say say that if everybody wakes up, then when all is well again, hopefully. But it's not gonna be easy. It's not gonna be overnight. Cause what I la- what Iceland had to go through, is very tough. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't talked to Hort- Tortfusson recently. Um, you know, not only, not only the politicians we have to root out. We have to have a media that tells the truth. And right now, the alternative they're dying. Media is- they're dying. The 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 no. mass media now they're dying, and they're gonna have, they're trying to change the you know people who have been fired probably the the like that uh, what's it um Ryan Williams and. Yeah, the, uh, Fox Five. If he changes, I'm. I don't really have anything against the guy. If he changes, Fox Five probably because like Fox is somewhat changing. One lady that was fired from CBS because she exposed Fast and Furious. She works in Fox Five. Well, not Fox Five, but Fox News. Sorry. Um. So like Fox News, I think could be changing somewhat, but it's no way because somebody somebody keeps they they think they're right when I talk when I tell people oh yeah um they need money Chris. So I'm like, yeah, but if they are not real people, people are not going to watch them. No viewers, no money, no money, no renewing contract. And you're, you're going to get cut off the cable company. There's a bunch of cable companies that are cutting off CNN, Fox News, MSNBC. They're cutting them out. No, that's good. I even called, a, I even called Dish Network one day. And yeah, she's like, oh, there was no, con- no, no new contract for, what was it, uh, CNN or Fox News. There's no new contract. So they're out of the cable. They're out of the cable boxes. You're not going to see them there. 
So, and the more they lie, they're, they're just going to F them up, F themselves up because people are not going to watch them and then they're just going to lose their jobs. That's all. That's right. Yeah. People don't believe anymore. You know, so we just really have to, to, we have to really take this country back. You know, if, if peace revolution is, is impossible, then a violent revolution will be inevitable. John F. Kennedy. And Chris, and uh, if you will check our website occasionally, you know, my personal one, MerlinMiller.com, but we'll have our political party website up pretty soon. Next week is our target. Oh yeah. But by the way, um, what are what are any recent or future plans you have? Because well, we we just want to build the party. We want to wake people up. We want to spread the word. We want to have what we call an Eagles News Network, where we can actually have our own political party have a news. A network where we can take feeds from alternative media sources and, and the world uh, would be nice because the uh, one of the best media you'll hear is foreign you know GMO and Monsanto is, is front headline news in Europe some parts in Europe they're not stupid yeah. here it's placed under the rug but in Europe Monsanto is headline news front page news you know yeah. but yeah, but exactly like um so yeah, we all we all have to work together and to to make things better. Um, by the way, um, there is some there was even something called um conspiracy news network is from the is from the Netherlands. So even the Dutch royalty, which I think they could be in the New World Order in some way, but even they would want prosperity. Otherwise, they would shut the side down. So look up conspiracy news network. A friend of mine said that yeah he he's he's. He's gonna, you know, have a show in radio, a conspiracy news network, whether it's a radio show or a uh, podcast or something like that. So yeah, it's I think it's more like the new CNN, <laughs> conspiracy no. news network. That's what we need. We need people waking up to the truth. Yep, it's all kinds of levels where it's spiritual, physical. It's all the levels you could think of, really. Divine intervention. Yeah. So, wait, before you go, um, what message would you want to say to all the listeners? I have hope because I think this is turning around. I think people are waking up, and, and just as your effort is, is out there waking people up, uh, we need lots of people. We need an army of eagles, I call it, to keep waking everybody up and have hope that we can take our country back. and. And once again, America, America needs to lead by example, by positive example again, and, and not by force or intimidation. You know, our founding fathers gave us such an incredible country, and we've got to fight to get it back. We're, tr we're letting it be trash, etc. So, yeah, I got you. Um, you so, yeah, hopefully, hopefully in the future, um, maybe 10, 20 years from now, I'll be like, yeah, we are free from New World Order. We are, you know, I'm here broadcasting, so, and and we're all free, a free world again. So hopefully, in the next twenty years, just like Alex has been going, because Alex Jones has been going for over twenty something years to this, you know, since the nineties, and so he's yeah. seen, he's seen this, knows the players, knows the game, etc. I'm not saying he's perfect, but he's been here for, like for a long time in the business. So hopefully, when I'm as old as him, uh. I'll be able to say, yeah, there's no more New World Order in the world. The New World Order has fallen many years ago. All is well again. Cool. And, uh, Chris, there's a video you need to see that we just put up. It's yeah. at the, the homepage of MerlinMiller.com. If you go down, it's uh, a flag you'll see, and it's a bunch of eagles that save the flag and restore it up. It's, a, it's an animated video. It's only like 24 seconds. But if you get a chance to take a look at that, I think it'll be fun. Yeah, by the way, there's also something called Elephant in the Room. Oh, there's a bunch of stuff. Um, oh, nice. Go to, yeah, go to the most recent one, the one that's announcing the political party. And uh, if Yeah, you Eagle, the, is it something yeah. Eagles take flight? Right, and if you go down to the second video, you'll see the one with the flag, and that's an animated video of Eagles that save the flag. And, uh, that's it. Oh, I, I see some animation. Yeah, rise up and restore our republic. Oh man, I, I, I see 
hear like, like the eagle like grabbing the flag before it fell to the ground. Yep, and then he rises with it. And uh, I don't know if you saw the bolt of lightning, but it said New World Order in the bolt of lightning there. Yeah, it said like like some like some graphic said NWO. Right. So, so these eagles have to have to restore our flag and and fight the New World Order. Oh yeah, and by the way, um, there's this picture. One more picture you should look up. Um, where. Well, I actually don't remember who did it. It was anonymously. Um, it was somewhere on Facebook where like the the U.S. flag was like in the middle like of a of a landfill, and like there's like a landfill, and there's like the U.S. flag in the middle of it, and behind it there's like barbed wire fence. So I'm like, the people around the country they don't want they don't want to make the U.S. better. They want to kill the country, and you see a landfill with all kind all garbage all, all everything, and the flag is right there. And that picture really, I made me like, made me angry, because the people around the country, that's what they want the country to do. They want the country to die, because like you you see bar you see barbed wire fence, and then you see like all all like mountains of, of trash, and you see like the like the U.S. flags, uh, like and you can hardly see it. It's very tiny from a from a, from like behind a very far barbed wire, but you see the American flag there. So that's what the country's gone right to the ground, and. The people who run the country are driving the country to the ground. We're not allowed to have all kind of technology that is awesome like Japan. We cannot dominate the uh, TVs or phones like in Korea. We cannot dominate uh, science like like the like the Europeans or even the, especially the Swiss. We cannot we cannot get alternative energy like like they would probably have uh, in other countries. We cannot do so much things because we have this new world order. That's why we cannot. We're not allowed to. That no, pisses me off. That we're pisses me off for real. No. I've been told about the suppressed energy. Um, uh, many many people I've had on, even on air, off air, they told me, yeah, the suppressed energy, all kinds of stuff that they're not teaching the books, etc. It's 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 a disgrace how we let this happen because all kinds of science there because there shouldn't have to be. This shouldn't have to be your life. Shouldn't have to be over just because you can't. There's some cancer, some diabetes you can't get rid of, which that's actually the opposite. Um, there's no such thing as just something that runs on gas or just on electricity. There's a bunch of other things that could power a car. It's just that people don't know about it. It's not in the science books, etc. So we have to we have to really know first our own basic rights. We have to get aware of what's going on. We have to question everything we hear. Etc. We cannot let emotions to get in our way, like a Sandy Hook. Now we have to get, we have to come together, you know, and, and find goodness again. Mm. And as, as far as Sandy Hook, I even had Wolfgang on, and he con- he considers it as like an illusion, which I don't know what's your perspective, but I just question it, and the re- people believe it because that actually happened. People died because they believe that twenty three p- uh, children were buried or something. So it it it, it like it psychologically would affect you. So we had to find a way to get uh, overcome that. So you know. Yeah, we just need to be able to find out the truths. Yep. Well, it's been a blast having you, man, um, on the show. Um, hopefully, I can have you on in the fall. Yeah, it was my pleasure, Chris. And by the fall, hopefully, we'll have our first annual meeting in September, and we'll we'll have some chapters formed. Mm-hmm. And yep, and I fun. and I would like to have a, a a few people. I'm trying to have a few people on, like more. I'm trying. Some of the guests I've had before, I want to have them again, um, etc. Et so we'll we'll see how that goes. Um, good luck with best of luck with everything you do, Merlin. Well, thank you, Chris. And same to you, and keep it up. Mm-hmm. Well. Take care now. All right. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, there you have it, folks. Former presidential candidate. And, you know, see, it's it's really hard to, to, to be president because, you know, we got a bunch of the power structure is not going to let that happen, obviously. We're not a sovereign nation. We were a sovereign nation before Kennedy died. But I believe we could still be here someday. But it all comes down to us. Do we want it or we just let the country die and the founding fathers get mad for the rest of eternity? 
you know, can you imagine them being in the grave, them coming out and then seeing what we're doing, the, we're letting people do the country. Oh, man. The looks on their faces. Uh, it's just priceless to look on their faces because they're the founding fathers. And let's say the founding fathers come back as like zombies or something. So imagine that. Think about it. <laughs>